Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today, you can see I'm in my workshop and I'm gonna do something kinda new that I've been thinking about doing for a while. I'm gonna call it story time. And it's about certain situations that happen, the real situations, and today I just had a really good one to share with you guys. I could have almost predicted how it was gonna go down, but uh, this is how it went. Today, right before lunchtime, I had a limb emergency call. A limb is a line isolation monitor. And when you have a limb error, it's usually something very bad. It means that one of your devices has currently got an electrical short in some way, and that short is causing the limb panel to alarm. Now these are brand new operating rooms, so I knew it probably wasn't gonna be the room itself. It was definitely a piece of equipment. So I took a Biomed 2 with me, great guy. Uh, it was an excellent learning experience for him because what unraveled probably would have shook most people up. Um, I went into the operating room. It was sitting at 4.5 on the limb panel. So it wasn't currently alarming, but it was definitely in an alarm condition and I started immediately going around to some of the more obvious stuff, looking for cut power cords, bad power strips, and uh, at first I started toying around with a power cord that was on the Pentero microscope. Somebody had rolled over the cord and it was obviously damaged, so I was moving uh, the, the area that was compressed and I was staring over at the limb panel and I was looking to see if there's any change, because that's usually how it is, if you don't spot something obvious. You pick up a cord and you look for an, uh, an area that's been damaged or maybe strained and you move it around and you stare at the limb panel and see if it goes away. If it does, you got a bad cord and you know where your problem is. That wasn't the problem. So I went around half the room and I looked over and there was a IV stand that was dripping propofol. At the base of the IV stand was a power strip. Right below that was a hotline fluid warmer. And both of them were just doused, absolutely doused with propofol. And it was clearly creating this alarm condition that was going on across the room. So uh, I notified the staff that was following me around. I said, oh, wait, wait, wait. Right here, we gotta stop this right now. Um, mind you, the patient was currently intubated and they were worried, uh, this was a neuro room, so they were currently doing, uh, they were gonna do some brain surgery or spinal injury uh, surgery. I don't really know, but something was going on and they were paying very close attention to this patient and the IV stand that they rolled them in with had propofol dripping all over the place. It was a mess. Not only just a, a slipping hazard because this white milky fluid was all over the floor, but it was currently all over the power strip and the devices that were right next to the patient. So what really happened is uh, we notified the doctor, the, the anesthesia doctor, and she said, that's fine, just leave it and you guys can go. I said, ma'am, I, I can't go. We currently have a situation right here and this has got to be dealt with. And she said, no, you guys need to go. And she pushed the equipment about, uh, I'd say about a foot and a half, two feet away from her back towards the corner. And she said, I'm going to have an anesthesia tech take care of this. And I stopped for a moment and I got a little bit closer to her and I said, ma'am, this equipment's coming with me. It's not going to stay in this room. It's, it's currently live and you've got a patient here in the room and it could catch fire or something, I don't know. And I told her, it's gotta go. And she said, she got a little bit huffy and uh, she said, I've got a patient to deal with. And I said, that's fine, I'll take care of this. So we got a bed sheet, hey puppy. Sorry, my dog's right here. We got a bed sheet and we started cleaning up the, the slip and fall hazard, you know. Uh, we're not above anything, all right? I, I will definitely help clean up liquid all over the floor, all right? We are all about the patient. But 
when the doctor insisted that the equipment stay in the room and that we leave, that's when you got to take a stop, uh, take a step back, and you got to be like, nah, this because anything could happen. Not only will they probably plug that patient back into that equipment, but more than likely, that equipment is just going to get wheeled around with liquid in it, and it's going to end up back in service. So, not only are you endangering the patient uh, by keeping it in the room and live plugged in. But you're endangering other patients further down the line because you know that equipment's going to walk away. So she got very upset uh, that I wasn't going to leave, uh, but she continued on with the patient. And this whole time, mind you, my uh, Biomed 2 associate was right there. He witnessed how my demeanor was, and it, he was actually the person that suggested that I make this video uh, because he said that was a very intense situation. And he says, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I probably would have left. And I said, you are the last step in the whole chain of things that can stop and protect this person. This person that's unconscious on the table. You are it. You're the last step. Everybody else doesn't care. They just want to press forward. And, you know, a lot of hospitals, that, that it really gets me too. A lot of hospitals have this, uh, we can just say halt and everybody will halt and we'll analyze the situation or... Uh, what, what is the other thing they say? Oh, yeah. They say, just call timeout. And then everybody will take a step back and there's no repercussions. Just call a timeout. Well, I didn't have to call a timeout, all right? The doctors that were in the room, I said, whoa, wait a minute. You've got an electrical situation. We need to stop. Oh, whoa. They did not stop. They did not care. In fact, they told me to leave. So, as this all happened, um... I cleaned up the mess and uh, my Biomed 2 and I, we took possession of the equipment, we removed it from the room and I stopped my anesthesia to let them know, hey, the hotline, the fluid warmer, it's a no-go in this room, I've got it with me, y'all need to do something about that, give them another hotline. But uh, that leads me to the next part of the lesson. It's something I learned a long time ago that I hope that you guys all learn. If you ever, ever have a conflict with a doctor, and I don't really care about nurses, but if you ever have any even slightest disagreement with a doctor, even slightest, I'm talking if you have a disagreement on sports teams to whether or not a device is ready to be used on a patient, always let your supervisor know. Always. It's absolutely. And I learned that a long time ago because a sergeant that was with me uh, back in Germany, unfortunately, it... I thought it was an insignificant problem and I didn't tell them about it. And doctors talk. They always talk. You think that it's water under the bridge. It's never water under the bridge with a doctor. All they got to do is voice their concern to the director just a tiny little bit. Or the vice president of the hospital, you know they got their ear. So always tell your, your supervisor if there's even a slightest disagreement or a conflict with a doctor. And... That way there, he's not going to be sideswiped because he will be asked. Somebody's going to mention it. Maybe not now. It might be in two weeks from now when they say, oh, you know, Justin, that guy over there, he's horrible. He treated doctors really poorly. At least he'll know the correct story. So that's today's uh, biomed story time. Uh, today I had a situation where there was propofol all over equipment. And the doctor insisted that I leave the room and leave the equipment in the room with the patient, still plugged in. And uh, it was an excellent lesson for my Biomed 2. Never, never give in. If it's a clear and present danger, you have to stop and you have to stand your ground. Me, I stood about a face, uh, about a foot away from a doctor and looked her in the eyes and said, no, it's not going to happen. Not today. And, uh, just to let you guys know, uh, it's okay if you're on the right side, and you might get lectured about it later. That's fine. But what you got to know is always let your supervisor know before somebody else does. At least they're prepared for the argument in case it should happen. In this case, I went down to my supervisor's office, and he had the big boss in his office with him, and the door was closed, and I knocked on the window, and I told him, hey, you and me, we need to talk, like, right now. And uh, bless his heart, he opened up the door, and he allowed me and the Biomed 2 in to explain our case. Um, 
to which I, I was a little bit, uh, I don't know if it was the caffeine or whatnot, or me uh, decompressing after the situation. Uh, my voice was a little trembly and I was a little excitable. But uh, my demeanor in the operating room was as calm and as cool as can be. I was maybe in a little bit of shock that the doctor was telling me to leave despite the obvious danger that was going on right there. But uh, that's today's lesson. It's today's story time. I'm going to have plenty of them because, trust me, 17 years of doing this craziness and uh, you never know what you're going to walk into. Just always be on the right side, okay guys? Alright, y'all have a good day.